let's say you throw a 15 kilogram ball, perhaps a green one. Uh, and you throw that ball, the velocity initial of the ball is equal to 7.5 a plus 4.7 j meters per second. And you are, of course, standing on ice. This is perfect ice. It is frictionless. Uh, and the mass of you is 75 kilograms. And the question is, if you are standing, bless you, on ice, and you throw this medicine ball with this, uh, if this is the velocity of the ball, the question is, what is the velocity of you after you throw the ball. First off, Hillary is momentum conserved during this event. Um, yeah. How do you know? Because if you if you sum the forces on the ball and the and you, you will end up with a net force equal to zero, right? Because there's a force acting on the ball, there's a force acting on you as well, according to Newton's third law. Those are going to be equal but opposite forces if you add them up. The net force equals zero. Therefore, the derivative of momentum as a function of time is equal to zero. Therefore, we have conservation of momentum. So we have the sum of the initial momentums of the system equals the sum of the final momentums of the system. On the left-hand side, what is the initial? What do we know about the initial momentum of the system? Right. Wait, what was the question? On the left-hand side of the equation, we have the initial momentum of the system equals the final momentum of the system. What do we know about the initial momentum of the system? It's the mass of the ball and the velocity of the ball. True. I agree with this. Give me more. Who's got more for me? Uh, Silva. It's zero. It's zero. Right. Because initially, go ahead, Silva. Nothing is Initially is before I throw the medicine ball. Finally, is after I throw the medicine ball and I'm not standing on ice or else I'd be going that way. Right? Okay. So, notice that, and I'm going to write this all down, but basically we need to identify that the initial momentum of the system is equal to zero. So we have the mass of the ball times the velocity uh, initial of the ball plus the mass of u times the velocity initial of u is equal to the mass of the ball plus, or times the velocity final of the ball plus the mass of u times the velocity final of u. And yes, both of these velocities initial are equal to zero. Therefore, on the left-hand side, we have a zero. So zero equals the mass of the ball times the velocity final of the ball plus the mass of u times the velocity final of u. So negative of the mass of the ball times the velocity final of the ball equals the mass of u times the velocity final of u. We're trying to figure out the velocity final of u. So your final velocity equals the negative of the mass of the ball times the velocity final of the ball divided by the mass of Please give me all of the numbers here. Um, Travis. Um, mass of the ball. Mass of the ball is 15 kilograms. Times velocity of the uh, final of the ball. 7.5 i plus 4.7 j meters per second. Good. Divided by the mass of you. 75 kilograms. 75 kilograms. So the velocity final of u equals Please. You want to end back to your point? Yeah. So negative 1.5i minus 0.94j. Minus 0 0.94j. 0 0.94, okay. And that, of course, is in meters per second as well. Now, I did this in only two dimensions. Realize, of course, that you could do this in three. And we figured out the velocity final of u. Why is it that 7.5 divided by 4.7 is equal to negative 1.5 divided by negative 0 0.94? I agree with that. 
I'm talking about physics-wise. Why, why do these end up being the same? I agree with that mathematically, but what is it about what's going on in this situation that makes those numbers equal to one another? Jenkins again? Um, your direction is exactly opposite. These are simply the i and j variables for the ball's velocity and your velocity. And when you throw the ball, you're going to move 180 degrees in the opposite direction from the ball. Therefore, you're going to be moving at the same angle. This is actually tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So you're going to be moving at um, same angles, opposite directions. So that's why you end up with those two numbers are going to be equal to one another. Good. Yeah? Why would there be like a J component for yours? Going down ah, okay, so this is, rather than talking about a J where J is vertical, in this particular case we're talking about like I is this way, J is this way, so I threw it, what is it, like that direction, so I ended up moving this way, rather than um, vertical. Okay. 